Hi Year 8 students, parents and caregivers. My name is Miss Brownie and I'm the Faculty Coordinator for Languages at Gosford High School. In the Language Faculty we currently have three Japanese teachers, myself, Miss Tan and Mr Carter. Sometimes people think that with Google Translate there's no longer a need to learn a language. However, just like the invention of the calculator didn't spell the death of maths, it still remains a critical skill to learn a foreign language to communicate in the world for travel and business. Students often ask us who studies languages. Is it humanities students? Is it science students? In fact, it's everyone. According to Nessa statistics, it's a 50-50 split looking at HSC patterns of study. All major universities allow students to add a certificate or diploma in languages to any degree recognising the important role that language skills play regardless of your future career plans. Language study at HSC level also attracts ATAR bonus points for most universities. At Gosford High School, many of our students study languages. Currently in Year 9, there are 64 students studying Japanese and French. And in Year 11 and 12, there's about 50 students in each of those years studying Japanese, French or Spanish. Languages can take you anywhere. In New South Wales, there are different pathways for language study. In Year 8, students study one language for 100 hours, and that's compulsory. In Year 9 and 10, students can elect to continue their studies through 200 or 100 hour elective courses. For Japanese in 2023, there's a 200 hour elective option where students will study Japanese for Year 9 and Year 10. There is also a 100 hour option where students will study Japanese in Year 9. This 100 hour option will cover the exact same content as the 200 hour Year 9 content. However, at the end of Year 9, the expectation is that students who choose the 100 hour option will progress into the accelerated HSC continuous course in Year 10. Now, if students want to do the accelerated HSC continuous course, they can do the 200 hour course and change their mind later. Um, but any student who's very passionate and committed and is really certain that they'd like to do Japanese for their HSC and they're doing very, very well already in year eight is encouraged to do the 100 hour course and follow that with the accelerated option. We've had 27 students accelerate Japanese in the past and do very, very well in their HSC. So it's an area that we're quite experienced in and we're confident of student success. If you're unsure about what the best option is, please come and speak to me or your child's language teacher um, for further information about your child's um, performance and progress in Japanese currently. Um, if students choose not to study a language in Year 9 and 10, there is sometimes the possibility to do the beginner's course in Year 11 and 12, which is for students who don't have any prior knowledge of the language or they only have the equivalent of their Year 8 studies. But those courses are not necessarily offered um, and at Gosford High School the majority of our students choose to study languages in Year 9 and 10 and therefore the continuous course is what is usually offered every year. Australian students choose languages for a variety of different reasons and our students are no different. You can pause the video here and have a read through the list. In general, more languages lead to more opportunities. 62% of adult Australians wish they had learnt another language growing up. Knowing other languages leads to more authentic and cheaper travel experiences. If you have to rely on somebody else to communicate for you, that's an additional cost. In Europe, most adults can hold a conversation in at least one additional language, if not two or even three. And 98% of Europeans want their children to be able to speak foreign languages. So it's a very um, global job market these days and it's important for our students to remain competitive. Another question we are often asked is when is the best time to learn a language? Of course, the earlier the better for pronunciation and native like accent, but adults can learn a language to fluency as well as children. However, learning a language does require time and commitment, and during school is the time that you have the most opportunity to do so. Learning a language during high school is also the only time it's going to be free. For example, and it is a French example, but Japanese is quite similar, language courses at the Alliance Francaise are $600 for 32 hours of study, uh, which is a term for them. So it would cost you about $10,000 to do the same number of hours of study as that you can do between year eight and 12 for free at school. Something to consider. In terms of the level of skill that you'll develop, the best thing to do is to go to the NESA website or use these QR codes and have a listen to an HSC student doing their HSC speaking exam who got 20 out of 20. You can also go to the NESA website or use the QR code and have a listen to the listening comprehension track for the HSC exam. Of course, you're in year eight and you won't understand a lot of it now, but it gives you an idea of how fluent you'll become after studying the language for a few more years. What do I need to do to be successful? 
Essentially, just keep doing what you've been doing. We're always very impressed at the high level of proficiency our Year 8 students have developed, even by Term 2 of Year 8. If you've been successful so far and you're enjoying your language studies, that's unlikely to change. Learning a language is all about gradual learning, consistency and commitment lead to success. The topics that we cover are both personal and practical, but essentially you are the content. You don't need to learn any facts or figures, you just need to talk about yourself, your life, your opinions and your interests in Japanese. There are no essays, research tasks, major works or portfolios. It's a similar style of assessment through Year 9, 10, 11 and 12 as what you've already done in Year 8. Listening, reading, writing and speaking. In the HSC, students are allowed to use dictionaries if needed, although usually our students don't require them. At Gosford, almost all of our students who study a language for the HSC obtain results in the top two bands and we often have students um, who get a mark in the top five or ten in the state ranks or place in the all-rounders list for students who got band six in all their subjects and so on. So there's a 200 hour course which means you study Japanese in year nine and ten. The 100 hour course is a year nine course plus the um, expectation that you perhaps accelerate into year ten. The year 9 100 hour course content is the same as the year 9 200 hour course. It's just that in year 10, the 200 hour students will continue in that pathway and the 100 hour course students will switch to the year 11 and 12 course. The content that students would cover in year 10 is covered again in the year 11 and 12 course, so students don't miss out on any content. They just don't repeat the same content twice um, as our other students would be doing. The year 9 course is designed so that by the end of year 9, all students will be at a place where they're able to accelerate if they should choose to do so. So five periods a fortnight, of course, as your Japanese abilities increase and the amount of Japanese we use in the classroom will also increase. And it gives you practical language skills that you can apply to work, further study, training or leisure. So you can start to access authentic Japanese resources such as anime and manga, music and TV shows, and obviously travel to Japan. Our course is designed very carefully to prepare students for their senior studies. Often students worry about a sharp um, increase in difficulty as they move into year nine or year 11, but our course is designed to very gradually and um, effectively prepare students for their senior studies and to be confident independent language users. So if I'm gonna study a foreign language, why should it be Japanese? Australia has the, the fourth highest number of Japanese language learners worldwide, and it's the most popular language taught in Australia. It's still our second largest trading partner and there's significant inbound and outbound tourism, obviously um, outside of COVID times with Japan. So a lot of reasons and a lot of opportunities to use Japanese in all different contexts. Many of you will be familiar with the brand names on the slide here. Um, you know, Japanese companies are renowned worldwide for their quality in all different areas from cars to video games, cameras, food and so on and so forth. So whatever your areas of interest, there's a Japanese company and an opportunity out there for you. All those anime and video games need to be subtitled and dubbed by somebody as well. At Gosford High School, we make a big effort to give students as many authentic opportunities as possible to build a personal connection with Japan. We have a long-standing sister school in Japan, Kokobunji Metropolitan High School in Tokyo. Um, and we usually have annual exchanges where we go to Japan for two weeks and they come to Australia for two weeks as well. So where possible, we have those opportunities. We also have um, Japanese film festival, video matsuri, immersion workshops at the Japan Foundation and the Tanken Center in Sydney, Japanese calligraphy workshops with staff from the Japanese consulate and many other opportunities um, that come up uh, from year to year. So in terms of language level, um, our syllabuses aren't <coughs> officially aligned to any kind of global measure of proficiency but approximately speaking by the end of year 12 if you continue with the continuous course it gets you to a high intermediate stage in the common European framework of reference for languages so that's roughly a B1 moving into B2 um, so again you can pause the video here and have a read through the different levels and their classifications Essentially what that means is by the end of year 12, you'll be able to do persuasive, creative, analytical and evaluative writing tasks, use your critical thinking skills to and express yourself in Japanese, and talk about relevant personal and global issues um, in your life and in the world around you. In terms of uh, subjects and topics that we cover in the course, our syllabus is completely open. We can study any topic that we like for however long we like. So the topics in the subject selection booklet are indicative. 
um, because we have that flexibility. So we often seek student feedback on the topics that we cover and the assessment tasks that we do. We seek student feedback on progress and the effectiveness of our teaching strategies and we always review and improve our programs to reflect the latest research in language acquisition. Uh, we encourage our students to reflect on their learning and develop effective strategies for time management and um, self-regulation. It's important that our students can learn independently um, and not just with a teacher in the classroom. So the themes and topics in the booklet um, you can read through as well. There's more information in the booklet as well as here. So feel free to pause and have a look through the different topics. We try to give students um, a range of different topics. There's quite a, a wide variety of different things that they'll be able to talk about by the end of year nine and 10. For the students who are choosing the 100 hour course, any topic that we would cover in the year 10 course is covered again in the year 11 and 12 course. So they won't miss out on anything. Some student data from a survey of a class. You can pause and have a read through this. And we really encourage students to reflect on their strengths and weaknesses and make changes to their study habits. And this isn't important only for Japanese, but also for all of their other subject areas. So languages plus anything gives you lots of opportunities in the world, regardless of your intended career path. It's a skill for life, and we look forward to helping you develop your language skills in year nine and 10. If you have any further questions, especially regarding 100 versus 200 hour course choices, please come and speak to us in languages or send me an email. Thank you.